Like it or not, the way we use our phones is now a big part of who we are. So if you want to be a modern gentleman, it's essential that you learn to text like one. In this video, I'm going to give you the etiquette of where and when to text, how to compose the right message, and how to deal with modern features like voice notes and red receipts. So in a world where grown men text like little boys, you will stand out as a gentleman. Hello, my name is James, and I'm on a mission to create a generation of gentlemen. If you want to meet other men who share your gentlemanly values wherever you are in the world, you can join the Gent Z community. You'll find the link down below. Before I get into how to compose messages, whether to use emojis or not, etc., let's discuss the etiquette of texting in public. When in the company of others, they should have your undivided attention. Real life conversations take priority over conversations on your phone. When in company, it is polite to put your phone on silent so they do not feel like you are distracted by incoming messages. If you are with close friends, you don't have to be so formal, but even then it's polite if you do want to reply to a text message to say, excuse me, I need to respond to this quickly. Never send a text message while driving. This is pretty much illegal everywhere, but I'm amazed to see how common it is still in the United States. Also, never text when walking through a crowded place. Not only will it decrease your spatial awareness, but it's also insecure body language. And thirdly, never text while at the table of a restaurant. Before texting became the go-to method for communication, people used to call each other's landline phones at home to share messages or news. Everyone understood there was a cutoff time, after which it was rude to call. For most people in the US, this was around 9 p.m. And with texting, it's good to observe a similar cutoff etiquette. Especially as many people sleep with their phones next to their beds, your late night text could disturb their sleep. So unless it is urgent news, I recommend not texting past 9.30 p.m. To protect your peace, it is perfectly acceptable to use do not disturb or simply turn off your phone whenever you wish. A gentleman values his time and prioritizes the needs of the real world over the needs of his cell phone. Now let's discuss how you can compose a text message like a gentleman. Always write words and sentences in full with correct grammar, spelling, and punctuation. In the early days of texting, the telephone keypad made spelling words in full rather laborious, so abbreviations became popular. But now, smartphones have QWERTY keyboards and even correct your spelling automatically, so there is no reason not to spell words correctly. If you continue to use text speak, it makes you look either unintelligent or like an old person who has not learned that text speak has fallen out of favor. Always proofread your messages. If after sending a text, you notice that you made a mistake, you can send a follow-up message using an asterisk to provide a correction. Just as text speak is now outdated and immature, so are acronyms like LOL, LMAO, and ROFL. You can just say, that made me laugh instead. Now, what about emojis? Should a gentleman use emojis when texting? Overall, it is not very gentlemanly to rely on emojis. If you do use them, stick to the basics like the smiling face, laughing face, or winking face. Avoid trendy emojis like the fire emoji, splash emoji, and for Pete's sake, the eggplant emoji. Personally, I never use slang terms like bro, homie, or sup, but then again, I never say these words in my ordinary speech, so to text them would be completely bizarre. Now let's talk about the kinds of text messages a gentleman sends. Remember this, texting is inherently casual. It is the most casual form of communication we have, along with social media messages. Texting is mostly a utility. For genuine conversations, the phone or in person is much better. For that reason, don't send long, rambling messages that are overwhelming to receive. 
If something requires a lengthy explanation, use a text to set up a phone call or a meeting in person. Also avoid mundane, needless texts. Gentlemen don't text because they're bored. There are also certain types of conversations that should never be had via text. If you need to deliver bad news, invite them to a video call if you can't get together in person. If you need to share something personal, the phone is better. And a breakup should always be done face to face. If you are feeling emotional or angry, you should take the time to cool down before sending a text message. When you do compose your message, do not reveal your emotions with all caps or excessive punctuation. As I said, if something is genuinely weighing on your mind or you have a grievance with someone, the phone or in person is a much better way to communicate this. As a general rule, you should wait no more than two hours to respond to a message. Especially if you have received a message inviting you to a social outing, don't keep your organizer in the dark. Even if the text message is more general chit chat, it is rude to ignore them for more than two hours. That said, do respect people who take a little longer to reply and don't quickly send follow-up messages. The harsh reality we all need to hear is that pretty much everyone sees our text messages straight after we've sent them. People are on their phones all the time. If they want to respond, they will. If they don't respond within what you would consider to be a fair time frame, Consider if this is a mutually beneficial exchange. New texting features like voice notes, reactions, and red receipts present an array of etiquette dilemmas. So let me give you my recommendations for how you can handle those like a gentleman. Voice note etiquette is highly dependent on your culture. In some cultures, voice notes are the norm and it is completely fine to rely on them. However, in the US, they are not the norm. If someone sends you a written message and you reply with a voice note, that could be seen as rude. Because what does it say? It says, my time is more important than yours, so I'm just going to speak and you're going to take your time to listen. If you are in a culture where voice notes are not the norm, I recommend you only use them with friends with whom you've established it is your preferred way to communicate. Red receipts are an optional feature on iMessage and the default on WhatsApp. I recommend you do not turn on red receipts unless you always reply promptly to messages. When a person sees that you have read their message but have not replied, they can feel ignored and rejected. It is better to instead enjoy the privacy of responding to messages in your own time. Another relatively new feature is the ability to react to a message with either a thumbs up, a heart, or another emoji. This can be useful when confirming arrangements. For example, if you message someone, how's 7 p.m. at Olive Garden, and they say, 7 p.m. is good, see you there, you can send them a thumbs up reaction to confirm. You can also use the heart reaction for the same purpose, although personally, I only use that with either my mother or with a romantic interest. Everything in this video will serve you well as a general guide, but remember this, texting etiquette is specific to each contact in your phone. What is the right way to text your best friend since high school is completely different from the right way to text your boss. Overall, texting is not a gentleman's preferred style of communication. He prefers speaking on the phone or in person. But texting serves a very practical purpose and cannot be ignored as a big part of daily life and modern communication. I hope you have found the tips in this video useful. If you would like some more personal help with your texting, join the Gent Z community using the link below and you can actually send me a DM with a screenshot of your text messages for one-to-one -one feedback. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. In today's video, I'm wearing the famous $99 Joseph Aboud suit, a white French cuff dress shirt, accessorizing with a burgundy knit tie, and then I'm matching that with a pair of burgundy socks by Fort Belvedere, and finally on my feet, a pair of brown Capto Oxfords by Ace Marks.